I, I just want to say thank you guys so much for uh, for joining. I, I wanted to do this in person. I did a, a book dedication after my first book, and it was so special. And some of you guys were even part of that um, that first time. But it was just with our own little church there in Arkansas, and it was just a very special yay hey cammy thank you for joining <laughs> i have a few awr friends that are coming on here a little bit late because they just came out of another meeting yeah. so i'm so so excited to see you there and she's even got her book there so anyway i i just thought it was so special and i wanted to do it again with this one and i'm going to give just a little bit of a back history before we get started but then with all this isolation and everything it's just like how's that going to happen and then i realized that we could actually use zoom and pull in a lot more people that we would never have an opportunity to pull together so i'm so excited uh for for this um, but i know some of you are zoomed out and elder wilson you just told me something today it's a new word what was the new word uh that you have just you have just learned i think it even goes with the bible verse or something well, greetings to everyone from Maryland, and uh, I don't know about some of you, but we have been conducting just about everything with Zoom uh, and all our pre-meetings for spring meeting of the executive committee, which is going to be on Tuesday and Wednesday. And so we have all these meetings with different divisions and all of that. Last yeah. night, I was online. It wasn't with Zoom, it was another program, but something similar, uh, with those from the New York area and the Atlantic Union president, the Northeastern Conference president, Greater New York Conference president, Bermuda Conference president. And um, I was just kind of expressing that, you know, we're just kind of getting Zoomed out. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Honore, who's the president of the Northeastern Conference, uh, who, <clears throat> you know, lives in New York City area, he is just recovering from coronavirus COVID-19. And uh, his son, who is a healthcare worker, uh, actually uh, contracted it first and brought it home. And his son is okay. And now he's coming out of it, uh, Pastor Honore. But he said, I, you mean, I thought you were, because I was saying this is all consuming, and he, was, and he said, well, don't you mean this is all consuming? And <laughs> so now, now uh, Jerry and, and others who are going to be with us uh, for spring meeting, I have a text for our Zooming business, and it's uh, Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 22. It's a little play on it. And it says, and it's true though, through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed <laughs> because his, his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. So uh, in any case, it is a privilege to be on Zoom and to be able to have a community like this. And uh, this morning I was with the um, Ghana Hope Channel. Uh, through Zoom, and this afternoon, Weimar Institute and their church service by Zoom. So here we are on Zoom again, but we're not, <laughs> we're not consumed, so that's good. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that, and um, yeah, <laughs> Zoom, Zoom, as some people say, can turn into a little bit of a, a prison here, but I just want to um, briefly introduce people that we have on the call. Um, the reason, of course, you're all together is you guys have been an inspiration and a blessing to me. Many of you have prayed throughout this process um, and mentored me in some way or another. And so it's just kind of that, that circle of encouragement. And so that's why I kind of wanted to bring you guys uh, together for this occasion. But anyway, so I have a few different worlds colliding here. I have some of my teammates that have been part of the, the Bible conference ministry. Maybe you can raise your hands. Who are those that have been part of that? Uh, John, um, Valerie's been part of that. Julia, Jim's been part of that. Um, 
I'm just going to go go around here. Uh, uh, and, and then let's look at the, the GC family that we have represented here. If those of you that are part of the GC family can raise your hands. Um, so you can see quite a few of us here. Anyway, um, I'm going to start with Jonathan and Amanda. He's, he's hosting, helping me host this up there at the top. Uh, dear friends and colleagues, part of the DC. Uh, can you wave Jonathan and Amanda? So that's you guys up there. Then we have Nina Atchison joining us all the way from Australia. And Nina is one of the ones that I asked to share uh, specifically, not only her friendship, but her work has been a huge blessing. Uh, her, her recent book with, that was put out last year is Light Lingers. Um, I share everywhere I go. And so that's, that's such a blessing. And that's one of the reasons I asked her to share a few words briefly. Uh, Pastor Pavel Goya, I didn't think we would succeed in getting you on, um, but thank you so much for joining. And I just want you to know as well, and my parents are excited to see you, um, that your life testimony has been a huge blessing to our family and a huge boost of faith. One miracle after another uh, is something that's been very instrumental in our lives. So it's, it's just a real treat that we get him part of this. And then uh, prayer ministry's brother in Christ, Jim Castor, woke up early from the Philippines to join us. Um, Good morning. And, yeah. <laughs> and he was still up at one o'clock this morning. Then we have the Klingbile family. They're all on the couch. Uh, yay. And they're going to do uh, music for us here in just a minute. And they're the leaders of my Bible study group that I'm part of here in Maryland. And I don't know, mom and dad, if you have met if you've met them personally, I think I've talked about uh, all of these people. Uh, Hutchison family also have a family lined up there on the couch. Yay. Sure. And these are dear friends of ours from Arkansas. The Hutchison family uh, have just returned from being missionaries with AFM. Mm -hmm. um, dear friends of my parents and mine. And so I'm so excited to have them. And then Julio Carey is one of my best friends um, from ASAP Ministries, uh, Berrien Springs, Michigan. Thank you so much, Julia, for joining. And Jerry and Janet Page, you're not beside each other. You're like at opposite corners of the screen for some reason. <laughs> but anyway, um, you guys ha have been mentors for me in a, for a long time. And I'll just say when I, when I started writing this book, oh, I'll, I'll give that background just very briefly. But anyway, um, they said some difficult things for me in the beginning that really challenge the whole reworking of things and they've really just been such a great support and encouragement through this process. Cindy and Rick Mercer are another couple here that are separated. Um, <laughs> that didn't sound good, did it? No, we're together. <laughs> they're separated on my screen but they're also separated by about what five hours right now? Right now. It's so hard on me. <laughs> I'm so sorry because Cindy's working as a nurse doing uh, some contract in another part of the state so she's not home at the moment so we've got them joining from different places yeah. but Cindy I don't have your book here to show but on my program you guys will notice I sent out a picture of Cindy's book she and I have gone through this like neck and neck and just it's been it's been very difficult both of us um this book writing and 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 we're both like you know you can do it you can do it push you can do this you know the, the baby's gonna come you can do this and so we've been encouraging each other the whole time and i'm so Pleasure. proud of you cindy your book is is out if we can just get it into the abcs um that's our Amen. it's coming <laughs> eventually that's our struggle. So Rick and Cindy, uh, Clint and Gina, uh, GC friends and colleagues, I've spent a lot of time in their home. In fact, when I did 100 Days of Prayer five years ago, I was living in Clinton and Gina's home. Um, so here we are five years later. Uh, uh, Don Moffat, a dear friend from C uh, Northern Washington, part of the Army Bible Camp. Gerhard, uh, Gerhard Fondel, he's part of our Bible study group, retired Biblical Research Institute, but he's still writing and working. Um, and a precious friend. Of course, you know, uh, Ted and Nancy Wilson, and I can't say enough uh, appreciation for their mentorship and support. And all of you guys know that I uh, live here in a little uh, apartment attached to their home. So I've gotten to um, weather things here with them with this COVID-19 crisis. So I'm very thankful not to be alone. Um, such a blessing that you guys are. And I wish more people could see 
personally how you live your life because it would it would really really be a huge blessing. Uh, Frank Hausel uh, is also a GC friend and colleague. Um, and I'm also excited for him because, well, by the way, you guys, if you're studying the, the Bible uh, study quarterly right now on interpreting scripture, uh, Dr. Hausel and his cousin Michael are the co-authors of this quarter. So we're excited about that. But Frank has also just written, uh, recently written a book uh, called Living for God, and I put that on my program as well. And uh, I got to read it and write an endorsement for him. And I, I was just very disappointed that I didn't read it before I wrote my own book. <laughs> because there's, there's just wonderful things there. And I still managed to pull from a few things in my book at the last minute, but just excellent material. I encourage you to get his book. Uh, I have the Holland family, Brian and Karen Holland and Rita. This is my second family from Oklahoma. I've lived in their home for a number of years, so thankful to have them. And Sunny, my Korean sister, which is part of the Holland family, she and Tim, Dr. Tim, are joining us from Oregon. And then Marcus and his wife, GC colleagues. Uh, Marcus is a uh, director of the stewardship uh, department ministries at the GC, and so thankful to have him. And then Cami Ootman, uh, she's there with uh, Adventist World Radio. You see her face on the videos and uh, 360. And so thankful. If you haven't checked out their videos, please do that. Valerie and Dan, all the way uh, from California. Um, Valerie's my childhood best friend and so glad to have her. And she was part of our original book dedication. And then my parents there on two different phones and two different perspectives. Uh, this is the first time for them to do Zoom. I'm so excited to have them um, joining us. And I wish we had more time to, to visit and, and introduce them to all of you. Um, and Karen, thank you so much for hopping on, on as well. Karen is part of AWR and also one of my dear friends here at the GC. So anyway, um, yeah, just just in a nutshell and i want to move forward with the program because we're already running behind times and some of you cannot stay through the whole time and i understand that so please feel free to step out when you um <clears throat> please feel free to step out when you need to uh, no problem but um okay someone else just texted me we can see you but our picture can't show anyway this whole process let me just say in a nutshell, when I, when I wrote Daring to Ask for More, the first book that, that I wrote, um, it was interesting because for three years I tried to get something off the ground and I just never could. And I basically gave the project to, to God and I was just like, I can't write this book. Um, you know, different leaders had asked me to work on it, but it just couldn't come together. And I think God really recognized um, when I was a child, I always wanted to be an author. And so that was a dream for me to be an author. And so when I had that first request to write the book on prayer, I was so excited because I was finally going to be an author. Um, but when it didn't come together and everything, I was just very broken. And I was like, Lord, I can't do this. And it was that whole really death to self thing um, that I think God realized if I, if I had succeeded earlier, I would have taken the credit. So when it did come together, after all that process of three years, it came together very quickly. It was like within a month, the daring to ask for more was written. And I just, I just knew God had helped me bring this book together and I knew I couldn't take credit. And so that really propelled me even more, you know, this is God's project and he has to get the glory uh, for this. And so that was, that was a miraculous testimony with the first book. With this book, I thought naively to myself that um, if I was praying and really seeking God and everything, it would come together quickly too. Um, but that has not been the case. It's been, it's been a battle and a march for the last three years. And it's probably been the most difficult thing that I've ever tried to do. And literally just didn't feel like I could do it. And all these different things happened along the way from my mom getting lung cancer to one thing after the, after another. And, and many of you know how I wanted to, to give up and stop. So I know that this is again, God's miracle, even though it didn't come in the same, same way. And so I, I just really, you know, before it goes out, before it begins to get shared or anything like that, I just really want to pray for God's blessing. 
you know, to some of you, this might be weird to, to do a book dedication and the fancy program and everything like that. And you guys know that I never do things normal. <laughs> I'm always uh, doing, doing things different, but I'm also, like I said, a little stir crazy with this whole isolation thing. And so we've got to create a, a special occasion. Um, but anyway, I really want God's blessing um, to go forward because this is the challenge to live according to God's word really is um, it, it has to be the Holy Spirit's leading because we Amen. can tell people from the Bible, you know, this is what the Bible says. This is, this is what God's word says. You know, this is, you know, be doers of the word, not just hearers. And, you know, I think it's interesting you know, the Bible says, if you love me, keep my commandments. But it also says, um, if we keep his commandments and we don't know him, what's the, you know, so we have to have a knowing, saving relationship. And the Holy Spirit has to make the word edible to people or they're not going to, they're not going to benefit. And so, you know, our books are just going to fall on deaf ears without the Holy Spirit. And so that's why I'm so desperate um, that God really blessed. And of course, I don't want to keep the blessing to myself. I have uh, a number of authors here on the call, but specifically uh, those three that I mentioned with newer works, I want to, I don't, I don't want the blessing just to be for myself. I want to pray that God will bless those books as well. And so in the program, as we go forward, uh, there'll be people praying specifically uh, for um, Nina's book and for Rick and Cindy's book and for Frank's book as well, that God will bless those works um, for his glory. So anyway, um, that's my introduction. And I've asked Kling Biles to just lead a, 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 a song of dedication, love to God, because that's where my heart is. And then Elder Wilson's um, going to give an introduction or an opening prayer, and then we're, we're going to go forward. Um, for God's glory. So again, Indeed. thank you so much for, for joining. And everybody's going to be mute except for
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I asked specifically for those songs. I love that so much. Elder Wilson, can you open us up officially this afternoon, this evening? Well, before we have the uh, opening dedicatory prayer, and there are going to be a number of prayers dedicating this special book, let me just say what a privilege it is to to dedicate a book that is focused upon the Word of God and living by every word. Uh, as you can imagine, and we were mentioning that to begin with, uh, so many of us are involved with meetings now and activities over Zoom. And uh, you can also imagine that uh, people recognize that uh, we're at home and so we must have time available. And so I'm getting lots of requests to uh, speak at this little group or this event or whatever it is. Uh, and one of the things that I'm really trying to emphasize is that uh, we need to be preparing and not only being anchors of stability and pillars of hope, as I like to say, during this particular time of crisis, but I don't know exactly when it's going to abate, but my guess is somewhere between four to six weeks, eight weeks, things will start getting somewhat back to a new normal, whatever that new normal is going to be. But when things subside, Seventh-day Adventists are going to have such an open opportunity to answer so many questions that people all over the world are gonna be asking. And uh, there's just gonna be an openness that is gonna be unbelievable. My guess is it's not gonna last longer than about six to nine months, and then things will kind of get back to whatever the normal will be at that time. But uh, the Lord wants to use us to be tremendous witnesses for him. And I've been trying to encourage people to recognize that uh, the Lord's going to use us to proclaim the three angels' messages, the wonderful salvation of Christ. The core of those three angels' messages uh, is the righteousness of Jesus Christ, turning people back to the true worship of God, but to trust in Him. So many people today are so scared. They're so full of panic. They're, they're, they're in a state of chaos. And Adventists who know what the end is, at least theoretically, need to have that connection with the Lord every day. And of course, that's what daring to live by every word is all about, uh, in, in essence. And um, the Lord will use us to influence others to truly take a good look and accept the word of God, and of course, that's the written word and the living word, Jesus Christ. So, you know, I'm using lots of texts, and I'm not going to preach a sermon here, so don't worry, but uh, using lots of texts about trust. And uh, one of them, a beautiful one, <clears throat> excuse me, is Psalm 57, verse 1. Uh, be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me. The psalmist repeats it twice. For my soul trusts in you. And in the shadow of your wings, I will make my refuge until these calamities 
have passed by. And what an opportunity for us to trust in the Lord. In Melody's book, I was just looking through it, and in a chapter on It's Okay to Die, uh, on page 235, she says here, it is your privilege to trust in the love of Jesus for salvation in the fullest, surest, noblest manner to say, he loves me, he receives me, I will trust him for he gave his life for me. Nothing so dispels doubt as coming in contact with the character of Christ, trusting in God. And may this beautiful book as we dedicate it today be a means of helping people to trust God and his holy word. Uh, one final little quote here that I want to read to you, one I'm sharing with people from Christian service, which could be titled, entitled Total Member Involvement. I mean, we didn't think up TMI in some back room somewhere. This has been with us since the establishment of this earth. The Lord wants everybody to be involved in sharing his word. And uh, on page 99, it says, we need to look constantly to Jesus, realizing that it, it is his power which does the work. While we are to labor earnestly for the salvation of the lost, we must also take time for meditation, for prayer, and for the study of the word of God. And that's what Melody is, is emphasizing in living by every word. Only the work accomplished with much prayer, and this is a quote I think Jerry and Janet use a lot, only the work accomplished with much prayer and sanctified by the merit of Christ will in the end prove to have been efficient for good. So as people dig into the word and allow the word to then transform them through revival and reformation, and, and what a powerful thing it is that we have the 100 days of prayer. Thousands of people are involved with that. The Lord knew that GC session, although none of us were intending to do this, was going to be delayed. And that 100 days of prayer, which began March 27 and leading to July 4, that has helped galvanize God's people around the world during this COVID-19 situation. But the most exciting time is yet to come. And that's when we can truly witness to people and have them understand who the living word really is. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we come to you now as we move into uh, further into this dedicatory service for Melody's uh, precious book, Daring to Live by Every Word. We ask that you will help us to truly understand that we can love God with our heart, body, mind, and soul, as it says on the cover, through an understanding of who he is, through the word of God, through prayer, and through our own personal experience and the influence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Now, Lord, we dedicate this book and its results into your hands. We pray that thousands of people will truly be touched by this book and other books that have been written. Some have been mentioned already tonight. And Lord, bring people into a relationship with you and in a prayerful way, Lord, use each of us to proclaim this last wonderful proclamation about your soon coming, about your three angels' messages, and the fourth angel of Revelation 18, helping people to truly understand what it means to follow you completely since we are coming to the very end of time. So we entrust this book and the rest of this uh, short service into your care, and thank you for hearing us and for the promise of your soon return. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for, for sharing. 
and um, for being with us for a few minutes. Um, I know you'll have to go shortly because you have other plans, but it's uh, very precious. Um, Pastor Jerry, gonna let you um, share. Uh, thanks, Melody. What a, what a joy to be with this group of people. I know many of them, special friends, but some others I've just heard about a lot from you. And uh, what a precious set of friends God has given you. You know, I, I don't want to take too long. I've got notes here that I could go on a long time. And I won't do that. But uh, Melody is a special lady. Amen. And uh, not only that, but uh, it's just amazing what the Lord has done in your life and ministry, Melody. I just, Janet and I have been so blessed by you working with us in Revival and Reformation and in so many ways with prayer. And uh, I just, I look back and I think Psalms 139, God knew all of this at the beginning when you were in your mommy. And uh, he knew that you would be what you are. I think I used to teach spiritual gifts a lot as a first ministries guy. And I love this statement about spiritual gifts. You know, we, we read all, you know, Ephesians 4 and Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12, leadership, administration, helps and service, all those. But she mentioned several other things that I think God has given you, which uh, we don't always mention as spiritual gifts. We know they're talents. But she's in a spiritual gift section in, in evangelism, page 99. She says, one worker may be a ready speaker. Yeah. Another, a ready writer. He's made you that too. One has the gift of sincere, earnest, fervent prayer. I think some have a special gift of intercessory prayer, though we all should be praying more. Another, the gift of singing. Uh, you're a singer too, I guess. I don't know. Another should have the special power to explain the Word of God with clearness. So I see a number of those gifts in you. We just thank God. Um, you came when we needed you. Um, Melissa Miranda had talked about coming at Annual Council 2010, couldn't do it. Janet got you, and you formed a team and been with us ever since. And what a blessing it's been to have you guys praying early in the morning, during the night, walking through the GC building, praying over those meetings for 10 days and everything. And I still run into union presidents, uh, Ted, all the time, and people out in the field that get tears in their eyes when they talk about that first annual council <laughs> when you called for revival and reformation and what God did there. It was so special, and we want to keep that going. And I could go on and on talking about your ministry. I think of, uh, you know, when you you were working on that book, Daring to Ask for More, and how it kind of died and came back. But what a book it's been. And when we got it in 2014, uh, we began to pass it out. We sent it to all 10,000 pastors on the book club list and seated it that way. Jen and I have back trouble now because we've been hauling your book around the world for uh, six years on our, on our United, United 1K, taking three bags uh, each at 60 pounds or 70 pounds. But it's worth it, and we've tried to seed that everywhere, and God has blessed so much. And it's been one of Civic Press's best sellers, and uh, that's why they're so anxious, anxious to get your next one. But it's because it's changed lives. I remember, remember the treasurer of that large division that came in that day into ministerial. I was around, too, and you were there. I had tears in his eyes. He just he took us both, told us his testimony, how God had changed his life through Melody's book. It was so precious because he said, you know, I realized how superficial my experience with God was. And he said, now I've just found a new experience with Jesus. It's so powerful. And he asked for one of those books for everybody in that whole division. It was SSD. And uh, he took one for all the leaders in the fields and everything else, and we shipped them over to him. So anyway, that's a story that's been repeated over and over and over around the world. So thank God for daring to ask. And then, um, you know, obviously, Melissa and Janet both got an impression from God about 100 days of prayer before 2.15, and Melissa was going to do it, and then she couldn't do it again. So we, we put that on Melody, big load, and she did a great job. It really filled people in the prayer room at the GC session and all of that. Uh, it, it was a bonding time then, the 100 days of prayer. We saw amazing things happen. And then after GC session, I want to take just a minute to tell you the story. You may not all know it. Some are on the Revival and Reformation Committee. I see you, Clinton, and others here who've been on that with us on this journey. And God's done a lot of amazing things. He's raised up a lot of resources and Melody has become our resource person to gather more and put them up. Finally got some pay coming the last couple of years. We just gave her stipends once in a while along the way. So she's done so much sacrificially for the church during all these years. Wrote, you know, Praying for Rain and then uh, Revived by His Word, a little Bible study book and these other books. But uh, after GC session, we had a real burden. You know, we started, um, Revival and Reformation, and we talked about prayer, and Mark wrote books, and about having a spiritual revival, but after GC session, I know I had a special burden, and others did too, so what about Reformation? What does that mean? We go around trying to look in people's refrigerators, or, you know, how, how do we get Reformation? What about our institutions? All of that, and so we had a, our first devotion was Mark Finley. He came out with some 
powerful stuff for us. Seven things we ought to ask each other about whether this revival and reformation is really settling in. If you want it, I can give it to you. It's, it's beautiful questions about am I really having joy in the Lord? Do I long to be in the Word every day? Or is, you know, is it deepening? Or am I still struggling with the same things I was 20 years ago? And I remember him saying, for those of us in GC, he said, you know, they often say travel broadens you, but doesn't deepen you. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there can be truth in that. And I guess Zooms can also uh, connect you, but disconnect you. We have time for God right now. And I think Satan doesn't want us to spend that time getting deeper and going deeper. But anyway, I remember at the second meeting, Melody, and I think this is the basis for your book, why I'm bringing it up, because we're talking about your book here, really. But um, at that meeting, uh, David Trimmett asked me, he said, could I do a research on all the references of Reformation in Ellen White's writings? I said, man, I'd love that. Do it. Bring us, bring us your report on it. So he started that. I had somebody help him, I know, but he looked up every reference on Reformation. And he, he asked me ahead of this meeting, he said, could I come and give a 15-minute report? He said, I've summarized it. I'd like to tell you what I think about some things. I said, sure. We also had Jared Thurman doing the devotional that time. And uh, he came, gave his devotional. And you know Jared, he'll speak truth. And he was talking about a candor and, and being honest in the GC and, and making sure we know we're Laodicea and we talk about it. But in the end, he said, I believe this, this statement is really what God told me to bring to this committee. And it's... Uh, the statement from um, Eighth Line of the Testimonies, 250 and 51, and it's a call for reformation. And it's pretty sobering to me as a leader in the church. She says, unless the church, which is now being leavened with her own backsliding, shall repent and be converted, she will eat of the fruit of her own doing until she'll, she shall abhor herself. When she resists the evil and chooses the good, when she seeks God with all humility, reaches her high calling in Christ, standing on the platform of eternal truth, by faith laying hold upon the attainments prepared for us, she will be healed. She'll appear in her God-given simplicity and purity. But the next paragraph, she says again, the time has come for a thorough reformation to take place. When this reformation begins, listen to this now, we have conflict, we see lots of things around the world, good things in the church all over, but there's also a spirit of discord and strife at times. When this reformation begins, she says, the spirit of prayer will actuate every believer and will banish from the church the spirit of discord and strife. Those who have not been living in Christian fellowship will draw close to one another. One member working in right lines will lead other members to unite with him in making intercession for the revelation of the Holy Spirit. There'll be no confusion because all will be in harmony with the mind of the Spirit. The barriers separating believer from believer will be broken down and God's servants will speak the same things. The Lord will cooperate with his servants. All will pray understandingly the prayer that Christ taught his servants. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as in heaven as it is in earth, Matthew 6.10. Um, the reason I shared that long statement with you is because I felt it was a providential miracle that day. Uh, Jared said, this is the statement I believe God gave me for us. It's time for a real reformation. It will lead to unity. It'll lead to a, a spirit of prayer. If we don't, we're going to be in some big trouble. David Trim was next with his 15 minutes on reporting on reformation. He shared us some basic principles. He summarized things as David has wanted to do, gave us the whole document, which is very thick. But in the end, he said, this is the statement I think God impressed me to bring. It was the same statement. So we felt that God was saying to us, this is what I want done about Reformation. So we went to our Revival and Reformation retreat. Um, I think it was either that winter or the next, I can't remember, in December. Elder Wilson was with us and, and many of our people from r and committee. And we brought this statement up. We talked there. What is Reformation? We spent time talking about that, praying about it over the weekend. And in the end, if you'll remember, we came to three basic things we thought we ought to focus on. And the reason I mention them is because I think this is Melody's book in summary, in a way. And Elder Wilson, if I remember right, you were one that helped us bring together all the things we've been talking about into a sort of a summary of the three main focus, foci that we should, should focus on. And uh, they were <laughs> humility, uh, putting self aside. Remember Ellen White said, there's no limit to the one who will put self aside and let the Holy Spirit come in and fill us. So humility, self-surrender. Secondly, yeah, surrender uh, of self and sin and everything else was the second thing. So humility and putting self aside, then total surrender, living by every word, really, is what we said we're going to try to do. And thirdly, prayer. So we came out of that Revival and Reformation Committee right at the beginning of 217, I think it was, saying these are the three things we should focus on. Melody, I really believe God led you to your book to do that. It's one of the best resources we've produced in terms of those kind of things, being broken, really taking time with God to hear what he's saying to us, uh, knowing to, to follow every word. And I believe if we really will follow every word in the Bible and the spirit of prophecy, 
if we'll take our institutions, everything we're doing and ask that to happen, we will see the revival promises, she said. We'll see the reformation happen that she wants to happen. So anyway, I'm excited about this book. I believe it is uh, the Holy Spirit's message that he wants in this church right now. By the way, you mentioned uh, the openness people will have, Elder Wilson. I just heard uh, today that the Pew Research Organization has been surveying everybody during COVID-19, has discovered that people who are not religious and never pray, 50% of them are now praying. 50% of the non-religious are praying. I mean, the doors are swinging open right now. And I, I'm going to take too long if I'm not careful, but this other statement, Bill Crick from the Student LA's in the West sent me, it's uh, Last Day Events, page 2728. Uh, she, he's talking about how Satan poisons the atmosphere. Uh, he, he works in the atmosphere. God hasn't restrained his powers of darkness from carrying forward the deadly work of vitiating the air, one of the sources of life and nutrition, with a deadly miasma. And she, she says, pestilences will sweep away thousands. God has a purpose in permitting these calamities to occur. They are one of his means of calling men and women to their senses. Apparently, these calamities are capricious outbreaks of disorganized, unregulated forces of nature, wholly beyond the control of man. But in them, all God's purpose may be read. They are among the agencies by which he seeks to arouse men and women to the sense of their danger. So when we dedicate your book today, um, I believe it's one of the main things that God is sending out in this world to get his people ready right now. Well, there's many other ways we're going to do it, but we need a call to real time with God, to humility, to brokenness, to, to understanding with the reformations we need. And you're pretty specific in your book about a number of those. So thank you for that. Uh, you've been doing a great job of the resources. We had 100,000 resources downloaded from the r, r website in the last 30 days. It's a record for the whole 10 years we've been working on this thing. It's because people are hungry right now and they're moving forward. 30,000 signed up for that, but people all over the world, 10 languages, the 100 days of prayer. So God is blessing. Um, and we have a marketing plan again, book club, 10,000 books. We were going to have it at GC session to give away free. We'll do it at the next year. Uh, you know, camp meetings, all those things were lined up. We'll get the book out. Now we'll keep working on ways to get it out. But God has promised in Revelation 18, 1. And Ellen White said, oh, this as well. More than a thousand will soon be converted in one day, most of whom will face, trace first convictions to the reading of our publications. And so that's our prayer for this book, is that many, many thousands will be in heaven because of all your tears and fasting and, and struggle over this book. Thank you for doing it. And thank you for all you do for R&R &R and for all of us. We, we praise God for you, for your family. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for having Melody. She's been a tremendous blessing to God's church in these last days. So we'll all be praying for you and, and for all of you and for these other books, too. Uh, Nina, we carry your book around the world, too. So anyway, that's why we have back trouble. <laughs> God bless you all. Oh. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Jerry. It's such an honor to work with you and Janet um, and to see modeled in your own life that prayer is not something you just talk about or you push. You guys really, you pray and you lead us through prayer and we praise you for that. And Elder Wilson, thank you for your emphasis as well. We've already said to, to get the church into prayer and Bible study. Um, that's that. It does it, it makes all the difference. It really does. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Thank you. Julia. Happy Sabbath, friends. I, I am so excited about being part of this dedication, not just because Mel is a really dear friend of mine, but because I believe that this book is going to be used by God in a powerful way. I agree with everything Elder Page said. And, um, you know, another thing, reason why, I'm so excited about reading this. I've read only one chapter. I just got it a day ago. Is because I know the author. I know Mel. And Mel, um, she doesn't just um, preach and write, but she lives what she writes. And so, you know, I'm excited to read about it because she's authentic. And so I know what she writes is going to be from the Holy Spirit because I see the Holy Spirit in Mel all the time. Let me give you just one quick example. I know I'm supposed to be praying, but I just want to share this. Like this week, I know Mel is so busy with 100 days in prayer and stuff, and I didn't want to bother her. But a friend of mine is um, in the hospital ICU um, on his deathbed with COVID-19, and he's really crucial um, to the ministry. And I, um, I said, Mel, could you please pray for him? Mel dropped everything 
and she had the most beautiful prayer claiming God's word. And then she said, Julia, I'm going to pray on the hour. Um, and I didn't even think of that. And I said, okay, Mel, let's do it. So we were praying for Van. Um, and that just really touched my heart. And, you know, I know, Mel, that's you. You know, this is you. And so this is an outflow of your, of your life. So I'm really excited. And, um, you know, I know it's been hard. I know that Satan's attacked you in so many ways. And so when I pray, I'm going to pray for you too. And I see that God has helped you persevere. So thank you. Thank you for persevering so that we can um, be blessed. Many people can be blessed by this book. So let's pray, okay? Dear Jesus, thank you so much for what you have done in guiding Melody to write this book. And Father, I just pray you bless it. And I pray, Father, that this book will get into the hands of every seeker, every believer who needs to read it, and that it will be translated in every language that it needs to be, Lord. And I pray that your Holy Spirit will go with every book. And Father, thank you so much what you're going to do through this book. And I claim Isaiah 55, 11, so shall your word be that goes forth from your mouth, Lord. It shall not return to you void, but it shall accomplish what you please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which you sent it. Lord, you can use this book in a mighty way. And I also pray for a hedge of protection around Mel. Thank you for using her in ministry and blessing so many of us. And I pray that you continue to protect her and guide her. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much, Cindy. <laughs> Pastor uh, Rick, I'm going to let you, you share, and then Jim's going to pray uh, following you. Are you okay? Better now? Okay. I believe that God has called you for such a time as this. I don't believe it's an accident. Am I coming okay? Clear? Loud? Okay. Um, I believe that God's timing is perfect timing. I think that uh, your first book, Daring to Ask for More, is so incredibly important, but just as important as that is the book now, Daring to Live by Every Word. Uh, I can simply add to this in, uh, because I know in my own life personally what prayer and Bible study did. Before uh, I was, before, Prayer and Bible study, I was, my world was wrapped in darkness. Uh, I was uh, a slave to cocaine and crystal meth. I was doing uh, a large amounts of, of both of those, and, and I was a slave to lust. And, and I was a, uh, I drank alcohol every single day. I had a tobacco problem, and I probably talked like a sailor. And someone, come up to me and ask me if I would like to study the Bible. And so what I did is I, I, began, I began seeking God in his word. And as I did, one by one, the things I had been a slave to, God just gave me victory over. I, I, think, I put it like this. I said, you can't, you can't, and you've heard this said before, you can't stomp sin out of your life, but you can crowd it out with Jesus, the living word. And so as I filled my life with Jesus, uh, God gave me a new life. And he didn't stop there. He didn't stop there. Here I am right now on this phone line with this wonderful team for Jesus in 2020. Uh, that's been about 15 years ago, a little bit more. And, uh, and now I'm a, I'm a pastor in God's remnant church. Uh, I had never heard of a Seventh-day Adventist at that time either. In, in 2003, I'd never heard of a Seventh-day Adventist. And so I believe that God is up to something really, really, really big right now. Um, I remember back when, when um, you know, when I first, the first thing that happened to me once I began started seeking God in his word is, is God give me victory over the drugs. The next was the lust. Uh, but the alcohol is next, and I had drank alcohol for 20 years of my life. It, it really had a grip on me. I, think, I figure it's probably my gateway. And as I, as I uh, started studying the Bible, 
God really convicted me that there was another life out there. And, and I remember I would, I would go to bed and I'd roll out of my bed at two or three o'clock in the morning and, and uh, get on my knees. And I said, Lord, I'm in a rut. Help me. And uh, one day I was looking out my window and, and the, the Holy Spirit was speaking in my heart. And I said, you know what? I said, I'm not going to drink tomorrow. I said, it's, uh, and, and I know that it was God convicted me that it was time to put it down. And I did. And I went the first day uh, without drinking alcohol. And, and I didn't think I could go to sleep at night. But uh, I went to bed that night and I woke up just like God had been waking me up every morning, two or three o'clock in the morning. And um, I, I remember rolling out of bed and I get on my knees and it's just like, the Holy Spirit was speaking my heart. I didn't think I could go to sleep, but I went to sleep like a baby. And I woke up at my normal time, two or three o'clock in the morning. And, and, and the Holy Spirit just put on my heart, oh, how, how sweet uh, uh, your words are, how sweet your law is, sweeter than honey. And, uh, and, that, and, that, and it, I didn't know then, but what the Holy Spirit was putting on my heart was, was Psalms uh, 119 uh, verses 96 through 105. And the next, I went back to bed, got up a little bit later, and I read a devotion. And, and the devotion that morning was, I have restrained my, my feet from evil in every way that I might keep your word. I have not departed from your judgments, for you yourself have taught me how sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Your word is a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. And Melody, I want you to know, it was just that, that night uh, or early that morning, two or three o'clock in the morning, I felt the presence of God like I've never felt him before. Uh, and, and I knew that God had given me victory over alcohol. And I knew that, uh, that the, the rest of my life, that God had something wonderful planned for it. And he's not stopped. He, he's just, it, in our, Cindy and I made up our mind that we were going to give the rest of our life to God, whatever he wanted, wherever he wanted us to go, we would do that. And, and he has opened up one door right after another. So uh, I believe it's no accident. I'm on here sharing this testimony right now, because if, if God's word, if daring to live by every word uh, had that kind of impact on my life, Imagine what it would do to a world that's wrapped in darkness like the world is right now. It's right. It's God's timing that this book is going out. I'm thinking of Revelation chapter 18, verse 1. Uh, I believe that, that there's going to be a great light going out, sharing uh, the, God's word, the character of God. And, and I believe this is what God is going to use to prepare the world for his soon return. So thank you, Melody. Uh, that I can be a part of this. I will be your prayer partner all the way through this, just like everyone else. And I can't wait. I wish I had a copy of the book that I could hold up right now too. And But as soon as <laughs> I get it, it. <laughs> she does. That's so unfair. It's, 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 uh, as soon as I get it, I will read it. And I, I can't wait. I know it's going to be great because I know that, that, that it's God inspired. Thank you so much. Pastor Rick and Cindy have been all of you guys, many of you have been praying, but um, uh, such amazing prayer partners. Whenever I'm just like at a block or I can't, whatever, I will text them or call them or whatever. And they're like, we're praying right now. And they are. And <laughs> Pastor Rick actually uh, prayed with me earlier today about this meeting already. Um, uh, some others of you did as well. So I'm so grateful for that. For that support, I'm so excited for your book. Um, pray Hello. big. Yes, that is that is on the way. Um, so God's timing is perfect. Jim. Hello, Mel. I I could not agree with the Pastor Rick statement statements more. Like uh, I guess I could I don't have to explain this. This is a group of people who have been praying the preparation of this book, and it seems like this book has been like long delayed, but it's not actually a delay. Is God's perfect timing. So God has been so good. So I believe that this uh, that this afternoon is not just a a simple dedication. This afternoon is actually a declaration of of a God that answers our prayer and answer it in a perfect timing, in a perfect way. So 
I'd like to, to request everyone to bow their heads as we offer this, uh, this word of prayer. Let us pray. Our great God, our dear loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we give you praise and we give you thanks because we know, Lord, that uh, you deserve all the praises and thanksgiving, especially for this book, for the first book. And now this is the second baby of Mel, but this is not Mel's baby as she declared, Lord, that without you, this book would not have been made to existence. So, Lord, as you have blessed the other book, we know, dear Father, that you bless this book and bless other people who have been dying to know more about Jesus. And, Lord, as we pray for Mel's book, I'd also like to lift up to you the book of uh, Pastor Rick, my, my sister Cindy. Lord, I pray that uh, may you use this book in such a time as this. When people are running to and fro, and people have been wanting to, to seek answers, Lord, I pray that they will see answers through this book that you have written to Sister Rindy and Brother Rick. And Lord, I praise you and I thank you that this is a time that we need prayer, that we need you. So Lord, I pray that they'll, that they'll dare to pray bigger because we have a bigger God. And Lord, I pray that you please open all of our eyes that help us to see their Father a great need of you. And Lord, as this big this book goes on into circulation, dear Father, we pray that you please place it in the hands of those people who wants to know more about Jesus. Who in times like this, they need the answer and they need you. And Lord, thank you so much that it is you who chose even the title of this book, the Pray Big. It is you who chose the title of this book, Daring to Live by Every Word. So Lord, we praise you and we thank you that your word has power. And Psalms 33, verse 6 says, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and the host of them by the breath of his mouth. And verse 9 says, For he spake, and it, it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. Dear Father, I pray that may you use these two books to declare, dear Father, that you are the source of everything, the source of all power. So, Lord, thank you so much because we know that there is so much more that you want to do through us. May the fulfillment of your promise, as you have said, as you have said, dear Father, that we should call upon your name and you will show us great and mighty things which we, which we know not. And, Lord, I pray that may the fulfillment of that promise will be done through these instruments that you have written through these precious people, these precious friends of ours. Thank you so much, Lord. We give you back all the praises, the glory, and the honor. These are your books, so Lord, I pray that you use it all for the glory of your name. For we pray this in the loving name of your son, Jesus. Amen. I have asked the Hutchison family uh, to share a song, Be Like Jesus. And I love this song. They sing together so beautifully. Um, and I love to, to see that. But um, my prayer is is that we as a church will be like jesus um people shouldn't be um followers of us but followers of christ and that is my desire that our work and i know it is for um those others of you that are on this call as well authors that um people will be compelled to, to follow Christ and be like Jesus. And so that's why I really love this song that Bo and Kristen are, and their children are going to sing for us right now. Amen. Thanks, Melody. Um, yeah, I would just say amen to that. Um, that's really the, this morning at the breakfast table, our family was um, just thinking about Jesus's life, especially the closing scenes. And one of the scenes that popped out to me was, even in the act of the mob who came to take Jesus away, Jesus couldn't help but heal and bless someone. Um, Malchus, the servant of the high priest, got his ear chopped off and then put back on whether he took the old ear and put it on or just made it new, whatever he chose to do, he healed him. Um, yeah, so I just believe that if, just like all of us have been touched in this group by, by Christ, if other people can, uh, can see him you know, through us and through his word, through a personal experience and prayer, that um, they'll be blessed as we have. And this, this particular version of the song is flavored a little differently. There was a young lady from the Awachita Hills Academy years ago who 
wrote the music. But if you want to follow along in your hymnals, you can turn to 311, hymnal number 311, and we're going to sing all four verses.
Thank you so much, Hutchison family. I wish you all could hear them in person, not through the computer. It's just, I love watching families sing together and praise God together. So anyway, Frank, I'm going to let you share. I just want to say, um, Frank uh, has really challenged me in, in some aspects in writing and I thought I was pretty much done with the book um, and he gave me some feed, feedback which kind of <laughs> upset the apple cart a little bit but was very helpful um, and so I'm just very grateful for the feedback and inspiration he and his writing have been so thank you for for being with us. Can, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, Melody, it's a, it's a great joy for me and a privilege to participate here. And I will keep my, um, my thoughts very short and to the point. Uh, John Calvin, the great Protestant reformer of Geneva in Switzerland, once commented on Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. That's the famous passage where it says that the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword and pierces all the way to our hearts and separates the minds and so forth. And he made the following comment, and that I, I would like to share with you here. He said, if anyone thinks that the air is beaten by an empty sound when the word of God is preached, he is greatly mistaken, for it is a living thing and full of hidden power which leaves nothing in man untouched. Now, he talks about the Word of God, of course, but it reminded me of a, um, a passage that was quoted already by Cindy, and uh, this is Isaiah 55, verse 10, and I would like to add verse 11 uh, on top of that, and uh, let me just read uh, what Isaiah said there. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out of my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and it shall succeed in the thing for which I send it. Now, Isaiah. And uh, the writer to Hebrews, they talk about the Word of God. But your, wor your book really, um, Daring to Live by Every Word, uh, has the desire to, to bring the people to the Word of God and to lead them to embrace the Word of God joyfully and to live by the Word of God and to implement the Word of God. And so... Uh, I think those promises that God has given for his own word, uh, we can also claim for, for your book, because rain is a heavenly gift. It comes down from heaven. It is designed for effectiveness. It shall not return empty. It produces transformation. It waters. It makes the, the things bud and sprout, and it turns deadness into life, the seed, mm -hmm. and ultimately into nourishment, the bread. And even so, the Word of God will do the same thing. And, and if your book um, accomplishes that, what better can we hope for? So that is something that I really um, am happy, and I hope that um, it will encourage others to dare living by the Word of God to the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Jonathan. Yeah. Well, um, <clears throat> can y'all hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> don't be distracted by our cat here. She, yeah. Astra, this is our cat. And Melody has a, has a friendship with Astra because Astra stayed with Melody this Christmas for a couple of days. Right. And so she's happy to be part of this. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Uh, before I pray, I just wanted to share with you a scripture that I'm sure you're very familiar with. Many years ago, one of the first times I was preaching before a, a large audience, I was very nervous. And um, in the preparation of my sermon, um, God, in the days before that, the, God led me to Jeremiah chapter 1, uh, verse 8. 
and verse 9, where the, the Bible says, Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I put my words in your mouth. As we're studying the, the Sabbath school lesson right now that Frank and his cousin Michael have written, um, you know, we, we are learning how God's word, uh, God, God loves us so much that he, he's willing to put his word through the human agents and, and, um, and we are, you know, he's working with us. And so I'm so excited for your book because it's going to, it's going to uh, challenge many people to, to dare to live by that word and to have that connection with God. And I believe that he has touched you um, with the gift to write and share these experiences and, and thoughts that uh, you have. Um, just how he touched the lips of uh, Jeremiah. And so uh, I just uh, want to encourage you to, um, uh, all of you to, and us, that we will all dare to live by the word of God. So let's pray together now. Father, I just want to thank you so much for this special time that we are dedicating Melody's book. It's really your book, Lord. You have led her in a special way to write this. And we pray that your spirit will, in a, in, in a powerful way, um, bring this book into many hands that need to see it and read it uh, and to apply it. Lord, we pray that all of us will um, have a deeper walk with you as we go through this challenging time. May we spend more time in your word. And Lord, I pray that you will bless um, uh, the Melody's book, but also we pray for um, the books that Frank uh, ha has written. We think of uh, the Sabbath school lesson right now. Lord, it's all to lead people to a deeper understanding of who you are. And so we pray your blessing uh, upon all these things. Father, we ask also that you will um, help us to share your word with others. As we heard earlier, Elder Wilson sharing about the, the great opportunity we have soon to, uh, to point people to Jesus. I pray that you will give us uh, wisdom and, and show us who we can talk to once we are able to uh, share again. And we just thank you, Lord, and we dedicate our lives, this book, uh, and our future into your hands. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Nina. Hi, everyone. Hi from Australia. Well, I'm so I feel so blessed to be part of this dedication, Mel. Thanks for inviting me. And it's a wonderful blessing to be able to share just a few short words with you all. I've only known Mel for about five years, but it's been just really wonderful seeing God lead her life and her ministry and encourage her in unexpected ways. Um, and she shared some of that in, in this book, how I've been involved in a small part of that, but it's been such a blessing um, to walk beside each other in life's journey. And even though we're in different continents, we've been able to, to pray with each other at some fairly crucial times in both of our lives. And it's just, it's been, yeah, we give glory to God for that. Do you know, just yesterday, as I was reading um, from the Gospel of John in my devotional time, I thought about the many profound and deeply moving statements um, and appeals from Jesus as he faced the cross. And one in particular stood out to me as I was thinking about Melody's book, Daring to Live by Every Word. It's from John 12, 35 and 36. And Jesus says, a little while longer, the light is with you. Walk while you have the light lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light that you may become sons of light. And as I read this, I just thought, oh, what a potent message for all of us. Because right now we're living in this world that is becoming increasingly darker. The enemy is, is walking around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And yet Jesus promises that the light is with us and he is that light. Uh, he invites us to walk with him through his word, um, through this dark world so that we'll know where we're going, so that we don't need to stumble and fall. And I believe that God has placed all of us and his people in many parts of the world to shine, to reflect his light. I guess my ultimate prayer today is that 
that this book that we are talking about, um, Daring to Live by Every Word, and of course, God's word, the ultimate light, and he, he is the source of light, will draw us and will draw people to him um, so that when others see our good works, the reformation in our lives, that, that the Father in heaven, our Father may be glorified. And so may this book help to inspire many people to love God with all of their heart, body, mind and soul, as you've said, Mel, in your byline, so that they can shine brightly for the Lord. And I pray that every single book that has gone off that press will be guided to someone who needs to hear this message so that people can be inspired to live as lights in this dark world and to point all to our source of light, Jesus Christ, in these last days. And that's all I wanted to share. <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity, Mel. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Nina. And Janet's gonna, gonna pray. Father in heaven, how grateful we are for a wonderful God like you, for your son Jesus, for all you've done for us. It's just amazing. Lord, we don't deserve it in any way. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. And Lord, um, I can't thank you enough for Elder Wilson and Nancy, how you put him into leadership at such a time as this. I believe because of his leadership, uh, it is hastening Jesus coming and reaching people around the world and just the call for revival and reformation. And, and uh, because of his leadership, it, it has opened the way to, to bring Melody in as a part of the team. And, Lord, uh, we thank you for what you did with the first book. We pray now for this second one. You know the, the sweat and tears and sleepless nights, all that Melody has been through uh, in, in writing this. And Lord, we, we just ask, as you did with the other one, but even in a greater way, that you will get it translated into many, many languages and that it'll be translated correctly. And Father, that that your Holy Spirit will just use it powerfully to get people into your word and to really having that experience. But more than that, Lord, you know, you have put it in Melody's heart um, ever since she first started coming to the GC back in 2010 for our annual councils, uh, laid it in her heart that, and as you have Elder Wilson, that we need a call to repentance, to humbling ourselves before you and into um, letting you search our lives. Lord, that's not something talked about much in our church. And, uh, but they both have called us to that and just really pray, Lord, we might take it serious uh, with, with Melody's book to, to do that. And, and so, Father, we, we really pray for your blessing. I believe it already is, but just that, that people will read it everywhere, uh, that you'll get more than just Jerry and I to carry it around the world and get it out there. And I thank you, Father, for blessing it. But I also, Father, just want to include Nina, Nina's book. It's, it is such a blessing and has changed so many lives, people who, who read it and start following it, even young children and teenagers. And, Lord, bless it. May it get translated into even more languages than already it is. And, and I pray that too for Frank's book, Living for God, Reclaiming the Joy of Christian Values, how we need a book like that. And Lord, just bless it. May your Holy Spirit be able to use it powerfully to help us as your people all around the world to really allow you to come in and, and live through us and that we live the kind of lives that would really draw our neighbors and people to want to know our God, to want to know Jesus and what we believe. And, and for Rick and Cindy's book, Lord, Pray Big, that is a testimony, a story that prayer really works. Amen. So many give up on it. Um, they, they just encourage people to get divorced. They encourage people, oh, you know, it's not going to work this time or whatever. But this is a powerful story that if we will call on your name, that you can really change hearts and lives. 
and Rick is just a living testimony of this. So Father, please, please, with that book, may it just also be taken around the world and be translated into many languages. And Father, that you can use all of these books to hasten your coming, uh, that we would reach the millions and millions out there that never heard your name, that don't know about Jesus, that don't have a true understanding of Jesus. We thank you, God. Thank you for blessing these books. Thank you for all these precious people that are on this Zoom. I know how much each one of them means in Melody's life. And just their, their prayers, uh, the examples they've all been to Melody and the encouragement. And, and Lord, I especially thank you for the living testimony of Sylvia, her mom, that she's still alive. Amen. Oh, Lord, it, it just, we can't, we humbly are grateful for the miracle you've done in Sylvia's life. And Lord, we just, as we pray, pray for a special protection over Ted and Nancy's kids and grandkids. I feel like they're under so much attack because Ted keeps calling us to the basics that uh, we should have been called to years ago. And that's the Bible, Ellen White, and humbling ourselves before you. Uh, Lord, just give his family strength to go through all those attacks. But uh, we ask for your mighty healing arm to happen in their lives in the ways it needs to, just for your constant protection. And protect Melody and Nina and Frank, Lord, and Rick and Cindy, because I know, we all know that Satan's angry with what they're doing. And just keep your biggest warrior-like angels around each one. And we thank you, Lord. We love you. And Father, we do wait can't wait for the day you do come may we see thousands in your kingdom because of these books millions lord in jesus name amen thank you so much janet <laughs> forget to un unmute my microphone. Um, at this point, we've, we've gone longer than I intended to do. Um, before I give the, the time um, or to allow my dad the last word, I um, want to ask my mom, as well as Mrs. Holland, who's uh, a, a second uh, mom as well. I'd like to ask each of them to pray with me. I didn't put them specifically in the program. Um, but my mom, like Janet just said, I am so, it's such a miracle that she's still with us. And probably, probably all of you that are on the Zoom call have been praying for my mom. Yeah, you have. You've all talked to me about it at some point. And um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't understand why God's gracious to us that we still have her with us, but we just praise the Lord. <laughs> Sorry. So anyway, um, the prayers of my parents have made such a huge impact in my life as all of our parents have. And um, I'm also grateful uh, for the impact the Hollands made in my life at Oklahoma Academy. And I lived in their home during my college years um, after Academy and going into nursing. Uh, so that's just, just been a huge blessing. So um, I'm gonna ask you first, Mrs. Holland to pray and then, um, and then mom. Uh, there in Arkansas, hearing, and then and then I'll pray just briefly. I'm not going to turn it into United in Prayer. We've already had lots of prayers, and I don't want to belabor it further. So, if you if you two could just pray, and then I will, and then I'll let my dad have a a final thought and word. But to, yeah, happy Sabbath, everyone. Let's let's bow in prayer. Well, Father, we are. We're grateful that you are our Father and our God, and that we can come into your presence through the name of 
Jesus. And we know that you um, will forgive us of our complacency, of our selfishness, of all that stands between us and a, a fully surrendered heart and consecrated life. And Father, we're here um, this afternoon and this evening um, to dedicate a book. Um, and this book is, is designed to call us um, to a more consecrated life. And Father, I just pray that um, you will protect it, that you will um, ordain it, that you will sustain it, um, and that you will work through it. May the words that are there um, be a power and a light um, for those who read it. Father, thank you for Mel, for your work in her life for her desire to have that deeper experience with you and her allowing you to help others have the same. I just pray for her that you will protect her, protect her family and all um, who are seeking a deeper relationship with you. We know, Father, that you are coming again soon, um, that even, even now you are at the door and um, we just want our hearts to be ready and our family and our friends and our community. Father, give us a, a, uh, a desire um, to spread the good news, um, especially at this time, as Elder Wilson was mentioning. So, Father, we thank you for these things, and we just pray them in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Go ahead. Have you turned me on? Okay. All right. First that comes to my mind right now is he that goeth forth and weaveth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. And I've been through melodies, tears for months and years struggling to write and come up with these things to bless others and i just praise the lord all the time for blessing her and that she's our daughter i'm so thankful and she's helped save my life and uh i'm still here and uh, we'll see where this goes but right now father i come to you in the name of jesus and by the blood of christ i praise you for melody's life I praise you for the lives of all these people here that have been such a support to her and that are working for you around the world, Father. And I know that each one of them have their own struggles and attacks and heartaches, Father. And I pray for each one that you will work through them with your Holy Spirit and that you will work in their lives what they need, whether it be healing or family members healing or deliverance from different problems, Lord. And now we just praise you, Lord, for the books that have been written, the others, and for Melody's books, Daring to Ask for More and Daring to Live by Every Word. Oh, Father, I pray so oft that there may be millions of souls in the kingdom because of these books. And I thank you for Melody, and I thank you for our family. And, Father, I just give Melody to you again. We dedicated her as a baby. And, Lord, she's seeking you, and we just are so thankful that she's involved in your work and reaching out for souls. So now protect Melody, guide in her future writings and works, and bless each friend who has extended themselves so unselfishly to bless her and help her and pray with her and give her suggestions. So Father, I just give this group to you and I give Melody to you and I praise you for what you have done and I praise you for what you're going to do. 
I thank you for forgiveness of sins. I thank you for the covering of your righteousness. I thank you for your Holy Spirit that works in our hearts and lives. Father, use us. May we be your witnesses, Father, in these closing days. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Thanks, Mom. Is Dad still with us? Maybe. Yes, I'm here now. Okay, I hear an echo. It's not me either. Yes. Yes, and I ask Mother to turn off her telephone because you take the telephone away. Yeah, just, yeah. Okay, go for it, Dad. You got the final, okay. final prayer. Okay, my heart, my mind goes back to 1965 in Palisade, Colorado. I went out there to cook for my grandfather at age 15. We were in a little humble house, actually a basement, very unfinished sheetrock on one side of the wall. And Grandpa would get up at about 5.30 in the morning and he would start praying. And he prayed for HMS Richards um, Senior in the Voice of Prophecy, he was very committed. He prayed for his seven children, my mother and father, and his grandchildren, of which I am the oldest. And after just a couple days of hearing him pray, I thought, you know what? I could pray. And so as soon as Grandpa got up, uh, I went out to the cottonwood tree on the irrigation ditch, and I started praying. And um, I know that that is the beginning of where the Lord worked on my heart and life, particularly for intercessory prayer. And then as time went on, uh, things, um, other people encouraged me to pray. But uh, right now, this afternoon, as uh, we close this time, it's been a real privilege to be among this group of uh, warriors and shepherds and servants. Uh, I just feel real privileged. And I was thinking about Amram and Jochebed and Miriam as to what kind of memories went through their mind as uh, Moses moved up front and uh, they followed him out of Egypt. And I'm uh, reading um, right now in uh, probably numbers. And it's just really a blessing to think about it. But here I'll shut up and move on to the important thing. Jesus answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. It is written. We do not live by bread and granola and peanut butter and applesauce and linkets and soybeans. We are to live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. The verse that I am sharing with people continually, every time I have opportunity to um, speak to one, I remind them of gate. 18, 7 and 8. When the Lord cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? And there is no answer. But the implied answer is not much. And then I connect with that uh, Romans 10 17. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But you know what? There is no faith without obedience. And obedience isn't worth anything unless our obedience is to God. And so I appreciate what Melody has been putting forth in 
daring to ask for more, and daring to live by every word. What this amounts to, this is a challenge. Will David and Sylvia dare or be willing to trust themselves to God to live by every word? Father in heaven, this afternoon, it is a real privilege to bring this book to you as Moses brought the tabernacle, as he brought Aaron and his sons, and he brought the sacrifices, and Moses put blood on Aaron's right ear and on Aaron's right thumb and on his big toe. And it wasn't that Aaron could have a big head or he be inflated and elevated, but he was to be a channel of blessing to others. And I ask, Father, that your blessing be put on Melody's book, that it may be an open pipeline through which your spirit may flow to those people who may be not yet are grounded in the word of God. But Lord, may it lead those who are hungry and outside to your word and those who are already in it to deeper experience. We give it to you and seek your blessing and thank you for it. Hallelujah and amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to, to pray as well um, as we close here. And I just want to, I want to thank you for your precious word that has changed each one of our lives. Each one of us that are here today are a testimony to the power of your word. And we are a testimony to the power of prayer. And I just praise you, God, for your patience and your long suffering. You know that we're not worthy to represent you. You know. You know that we all fall short, so short of your glory, but you still take us and you still use us. And I just praise you. I praise you for your mercies that are new every morning. I praise you for your promises. And I thank you that your promises are true and they don't return to you void. Father, I thank you for prayer partners and friends who believe your word and who live your word and who have demonstrated to me in living color what true Christianity looks like according to your word and patterned after Jesus. And I thank you for praying parents. I thank you for a father who uh, awoke many times at three and four in the morning to pray and initially annoyed me. Why was he why was he praying out loud? Because it woke me up. But it was those prayers in my teenage years that began to inspire me that I needed to be more serious about prayer as well. And so I thank you for the example of the grandfather that was passed down to my father, that's been passed down to me and so many others. We have similar testimonies, Father. I just praise you for those who've taken your word seriously and have lived by your word. And so God, I just humbly plead that you will take this book and use it for your glory. You know it's very inadequate for the need. You know I have not shared things um, in the totality or necessarily in the complete way that they should be shared. But Father, I just ask that you'll take the broken offering, what it is, and that you'll use it for your glory. Please, Father, we're asking that you will send your Holy Spirit upon us and that you will come soon so that this life um, and all can be over and we can go home to be forever with you. That is our greatest desire as a people and as a church. So show each one of us, Father, how to hasten your soon coming and how to be ready for your soon coming and how to go deeper in our own time with you. Thank you, Father, for hearing this prayer. Thank you for what you've done. And I just thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you, Father. I offer this um, and each one of these people that are on this call, 
um, to you as well. We just dedicate ourselves to you and thank you for hearing these prayers in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining. Um, before we close, I've asked Jason Hutchison to just play a piano piece, um, but that will be uh, the end of our program. So thank you so much. Yes. That was Amen. beautiful. Amen. Thank you so much. I love watching Jason play, whole Hutchison family. So thank you guys all for joining. This went about twice as long as I intended. Um, the only thing better would have could have would have could have been <laughs> if we'd all been together in person. But this was awesome to pull you guys together. And you all mean the world to me, not everyone unnecessarily uh, said something, but you're a vital part of my life and I appreciate your support so much. So God bless you and I hope you have a wonderful week and please stay safe. So take care.